Chapter 4. The Spirit Doctor The next day, after a deep and restorative sleep, I felt the radiating blessing of the friendly sun. It was a pleasing message from my heart. It poured in through the wide window, bathing the room with caressing, comforting light. I felt like a different man. New energies touched my inner being. I had the impression that I was inhaling the joy of life in deep breaths. In my soul, only one somber note, I missed my home and the love of my family so far away. Many questions were floating around in my mind, but the sensation of relief was so great that it calmed my spirit and kept me from further concern. I wanted to get up, to enjoy the spectacle of nature, all full of breezes and light, but I couldn't. And I concluded that without the magnetic cooperation of my attendant, I wouldn't even be able to leave my bed. I had scarcely gotten over this string of surprises when the door opened, and Clarencio entered, accompanied by a friendly stranger. They greeted me attentively and wished me peace. My benefactor of the previous day asked about my general health, while my attendant assisted by providing information. My old friend smiled as he introduced his companion, Brother Henrique de Luna, from the Medical Assistance Service of the Spirit Colony. He was dressed in white, and his face radiated friendliness. Henrique examined me at length, smiled, and spoke, It's a pity that you've come here by way of suicide. Clarencio remained serene, but I felt a surge of revolt within me. <laughs> suicide? I remember the accusations of those perverse beings in the darkness. Despite the stock of gratitude that I was beginning to accumulate, I couldn't accept such an accusation. I believe there has been a misunderstanding, I distressfully affirmed. That wasn't the cause of my return from the world. I fought for over 40 days in the hospital trying to defeat death. I endured two serious operations due to an intestinal occlusion. Yes, you did, the doctor explained, showing the same supreme serenity as Clarencio. But the occlusion had its roots in deeper causes. Perhaps my friend hasn't reflected on the matter enough. The spiritual organism contains an inner complete history of how one acted while in the world. Leaning attentively over me, he began to point out certain parts of my body. Let's look at the intestinal area itself, he exclaimed. The occlusion was due to cancerous elements, which in turn arose as a result of my brother's indiscretions, contracting syphilis, for instance. The disease might not have assumed such grave proportions if your mental attitudes had been based on the principles of modern nation and fraternity. However, your often exasperating and particularly dark lifestyle attracted destructive vibrations from those who came in contact with you. You have never imagined that anger is a river of negative forces, have you? Your lack of self-control and consideration in dealing with others whom you unthinkingly offended many times frequently led you within the sphere of sick and inferior beings. Such circumstances greatly aggravated your physical state. After a long pause in which he carefully examined me, he continued, My friend, have you noticed that your liver and kidneys were damaged by how you lived? A terrible disregard for those sacred gifts... A pointed despondency invaded my heart. The doctor seemed unaware of the anguish that was oppressing me and continued his explanation. The organs of the somatic body possess incalculable reserves in accordance with the designs of the Lord. My friend, however, evaded many excellent opportunities and wasted the precious treasures of the physical experience. The long task that had been entrusted to you by the Great One of Higher Spirituality was reduced to mere attempts at work that you never completed. Your entire gastric system was destroyed as a direct result of your excesses in food and alcoholic beverages, which you thought to be completely harmless. Your essential energies were devoured by syphilis. As you can see, the diagnosis of suicide is incontestable. 
I thought about the problems of the human way of life and reflected on the wasted opportunities characterizing it. During my own life, I had managed to wear many masks, tailoring them to the situation at hand. Moreover, I had never imagined that at some other time I would be asked to account for those seemingly ordinary episodes, which I usually considered as unimportant incidents. Until now, I had always conceived of human wrongs according to the precepts of criminology, and every incident outside the criminal code was related to natural phenomena. Now, however, I was facing another system of judging such wrongs. I did not have to face courts of torture, nor did infernal abysses await me. Instead, smiling benefactors were commenting on my weaknesses as if they were dealing with a wayward child without his parents knowing about it. That spontaneous interest, however, wounded my manly pride. Perhaps if I had been visited by diabolic beings who tortured me with trident in hand, my failure would have been less bitter to bear. But Clarencio's exuberant goodness, the doctor's unbending tenderness, and the attendant's fraternal patience all penetrated deeply into my spirit. I was not torn by the desire to react. I was struck with shame. I wept. I covered my face with my hands like a repentant and unhappy boy, and I began to sob with what seemed like irremediable grief. I couldn't disagree with Henrique de Luna. He had spoken an enormous truth. Finally, suppressing the impulses of my pride, I realized the full extent of my frivolities of another time. The false notion of personal dignity gave way to justice. Before my spiritual sight, only one torturing reality now remained. I really was a suicide. I had wasted the precious opportunity of the human experience and was nothing more than a castaway rescued by charity. The kind Clarencio paternally stroked my hair while sitting by my bed and said, Stop lamenting, so, my son. I went looking for you in answer to the intercessions of those who love you on the higher planes. Your tears grieve their hearts. Wouldn't you rather show your gratitude by remaining calm during the examination of your wrongs? Indeed, your situation is that of a suicide who didn't realize what he was doing. But there are hundreds of other souls who leave the earth daily in exactly the same condition. So settle down. Enjoy the treasures of repentance. Remorse is a blessing no matter how late it arrives. And don't forget that affliction doesn't solve anything. Trust in the Lord and in our fraternal devotion. Rest your troubled soul. For many of us have already walked the same path as you. Touched by the generosity conveyed by those words, I rested my head on his fatherly shoulder and wept for a long time.